First, let me ask you to forgive me. I'm filming this in my backyard. So you may hear trucks, you may hear planes, you may hear my cat, you may hear all kinds of things. But it's been a while since I've made a video for this channel or my blog or anything. And really this video is for one thing, and that's to address a shortcoming in my emergency preparedness bags for my vehicles. In those bags, which I'm not going to totally go into in this video, I may make another one. There's all your standard stuff from ways to jump off the car to blankets and cordage and cutting tools. If you're into the Dave Canterbury 5C, 10C camp of survival, those types of things. So you can just look that up and, and get an idea of what I'm talking about. But I realized a real big shortcoming in my kit when my family was involved with Hurricane Michael. They were involved with the evacuation and things were kind of in flux for a few days for them. And they're going to have to, in some ways, depend on my kid a bit, especially if they're considering returning back to the place where we stay. So, and I was not with them. But one of the things I keep in my kit, all these kits are this this guy here. It's just a really cheap, inexpensive, you know, you can get them from China, or at least the one I bought these for like five, six bucks. They're just little pocket stoves. And you saw the video here at the beginning of the video. You just screw it on. It's got a piezo igniter. You light it up. It's ready to go. My wife has a lot of health problems, so I try to keep things very simple for her. She doesn't like complicated. But I realized a very large shortcoming of this system very quickly during that kind of mini crisis that we had. And that is this guy. This guy here. This is the shortcoming. Because this blended butane propane fuel, and we have a few different ones here. We have uh, this guy here also. Get the big Coleman. Um, it wasn't available. It wasn't available anywhere. Within hours of Panama City, Mexico City, I mean, Mexico Beach, Panama City, Panama, this stuff was just not available, period. You can't get it. So it's great. You got this stove, you got cooking gear, you've got some pre prepared meals that are based on healthy ingredients and all that kind of stuff. But guess what? There is no, no fuel. So that's a problem. It's a big problem. And it was a shortcoming that I really didn't think about in putting those kits together for the vehicles. So now I have switched out all the kits and the vehicles for a different kit. And that is a kit that gives them some other options. And let's look at that. So stuff out of the way here. We'll revisit those cans of fuel in a minute. I want something that was still easy for my wife and something that I could go over with with my daughter. And what I ended up with was this. And the funny thing is I actually have like a steel version of this kit that's a military version of the kit that I've used in the past and stuff like that and it's really cool but I never would have didn't necessarily think about this for you know emergency kits because you know I've always had these little mini stoves in there but now I've went back to this and I think this is the ultimate kit uh, matter of fact when I was in Florida going back there to retrieve our things I use this exclusively to prepare my meals for about three days and I'm not talking rehydrate your food or packets of instant oatmeal I'm talking like legit food like cooking steak and potatoes and sauteed squash and onions and you know real food like real food, like actually cooking. And this held up perfectly to it. Uh, this is a kit that is based on anodized aluminum, um, which is non-reactive. So you shouldn't have any of the Alzheimer's issues that you have with raw aluminum. The base is aluminum, but you're not cooking on that. And water doesn't react with aluminum either. So you should be able to boil water in raw aluminum, which is what the, the pot is inside for heating lick, just like for tea and stuff like that. So all the way around, this should mitigate any issues there. The other kits that I have are called dual saw and they are a stainless steel uh, on the top aluminum on the bottom uh, mix so it's kind of like if you would think you know your multiply cookware that you know a lot of people have in their homes it's kind of a version of that and it's really cool and I'll review those in another video but this is the Trangia system since we talked about it and I got the little Trangia bag here so and i have transia stoves already i just didn't think about putting them in the vehicle kits and actually my dad is the one that said well why didn't you have you know an alcohol stove in your kit and i was like duh why didn't i and then i started thinking about ease of use and things of that nature and i arrived here so let's look at this so in this bag i have the pot holder which is a different pot holder than come with the kit because the one that comes with the kit's kind of really sharp and this one has rubber on it so it doesn't damage the pants. Uh, we have uh, an actual multi 
uh, use burner, which burns that same fuel that that little micro stove I just had uses. So we can still use that fuel for very quick cooking. This will boil that water in around three minutes. It's very quick, very efficient. So we have this while we can get fuel. But if we don't have fuel, what do we do? And that's what we're going to talk about. We have our actual kit. We have a ferro rod. And we have a headlamp. And I just, I put headlamps everywhere because I just don't think you can have enough of these things. So this is the base of our kit here that we're going to be looking at. And that's that. So, and the, the frying pan and the pots are all anodized aluminum, so it's hardened aluminum, so you shouldn't have any reaction uh, with food. So that, like I said, that solves some issues. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at it. And like I said, I have thoroughly used this for days. And I didn't use it with this fuel. I use it exclusively with the alcohol burner just to see how, how well it worked and how efficient it was. Because I've always used alcohol burners to heat water and stuff like that. But I've never really used them just for flat out cooking. And not like just rehydrating a mountain house meal or something. Really cooking. And it worked really well, I have to say. I did learn something about alcohols as well. And we'll talk about that. So in here, we have our fry pan. We have our pot, which is raw aluminum, but like I said, as long as you're just boiling water in this, you should have no issues from health concerns. We have two pots. And then we have our system here. Let me go ahead and take this apart and let's take a look at it. So, this uh, here is the base of our cooking system. And what makes this very unique is because the windscreen. Air is allowed to enter through here, so you have air to power your stove, but yet this will sit on top and protect it from the wind so, and also help trap that heat. So you get very efficient cooking. And then it flips down like this, the insides. So if you're using a pot, it just sits right in there. If you're using a skillet, these then flip out and you have a support for your skillet. And it works very, very well. So, using our standard stove that we can get from Trangia, it looks like this. And this can be used in colder environments. It has a, a tube here which gets warmed by the stove. So if you're in really cold environments, you need to invert your fuel to use it for liquid. This will actually warm the fuel as it's passing through to power the stove. It's a really a fantastic design. So, uh, and this just pops in like this. You have this hole in the side. So the hole, you just use this to feed the stove through. Like this. This then just pops in with a little spring clips here. Just like that. And you have your stove. So now we can just take this, get that locked in there. We can take this and hook it to our, our standard L, our mixed LP gas. And we have, we have our, our cooking system here. There you go. So there's our gas, there's our stove, and inside of our coffee pot is our burner. And you keep the burner in the bag, keep it from rattling around, and also is just a piece of paper in here for the same reason, to keep it from rattling around in there. So, and you have your pot. So, let's put that there, move some of this stuff out of the way, and let's start looking at this guy. So now that we have our, 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 our burner in here, we can just turn on our gas. You'll hear it coming on there. And lighter stove. And it's lit. We can crank that up. You can hear it. We can then throw on our base, put that 
pound. So we have our windscreen there. And then we can start heating our water. So we can just fill up our pod here. That is a little under a half gallon of water there. Well, yeah, a little under a half gallon of water there. And then put that on. Crank our fuel up and boil away. I'm actually gonna set a timer here and we'll come back. Here's our timer. Just gonna go ahead and fire that off so we can come back and look at it. And this acts as a great little lid. So we'll just put that on there. When we see steam start piping out, we'll come take a look at it. Okay, so we are about four minutes, 18 seconds in. So let's take a look at this. And we see we have pretty much a rolling boil here. So not a problem getting that water up to temp. Go ahead and turn that off. Take our pot out and we are pretty much good to go there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing cool down, remove this stove, and then we'll come back and we'll look at using this thing with the alcohol burner. Okay, so we've removed the Trangia burner, the Multif, the uh, LP burner from the, from the stove here. So we saw that worked very well, around you know four minutes or four four and a half minutes, something like that, for our water, and you know that's great. But what if we can't get that fuel? Well, then we have the actual alcohol stove that comes with this kit, and this is it. It comes with the burner. It comes with a snuffer. This is also a simmering, so you can control the heat. And uh, I'll loosen mine up a little bit to make it easier to move around. You can keep fuel in here. It has a rubber ring in here, so you can just fill this up and keep your fuel in there it's like that if you want but uh i just add the fuel as i need it i also have an actual transgia fuel bottle this is a denatured alcohol just with a little bit of water in there it keeps it burning very clean and we'll go ahead and set this up so to use this uh, fuel bottle we will unscrew the top here and uh I do add a little tiny bit of water to this to keep it burning clean. So because I shook it, a little pressure may build up, so I just press that to release the pressure. Then you can fill up the actual stove with your alcohol. There you go, that should be plenty, I would think. About an ounce of fuel there. I'm then gonna light it. I just use a ferro rod to light it. It works very well. So that's lit. It's going to take it just a minute to come up to temperature. Think about alcohol stoves, you can't see the flame, especially in daylight. If it was uh, outdoors, you would be able to. It's going to take this thing about 30 seconds or so to heat up. Once it does, the fuel will be wicked into a piece of material that's in the wall of this, and you'll start seeing the flames come out the little holes here. So, But I can put my hand over it and already feel that it is lit and it's getting hot. So there's that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the, the windshield back on. And one thing you're going to notice when using the alcohol stove versus the other is it's going to take longer. There's no question. Um, it's going to take almost double the time. But the advantage of using this stove is this. Number one, this can burn denatured alcohol. You can burn rubbing alcohol. You can burn if you buy high enough potency, just regular old drinking alcohol. If you're gonna burn some 151 or something like that, which, you know, I think I would be drinking that rather than burning it if I was in a survival situation or using it for some other thing than burning. Um, then you can also go to the automobile store and buy the cans of yellow or red heat. And the interesting thing is even when I was back in that area of Florida, which was devastated, 
I was literally able to walk into numerous stores and there were cans of denatured alcohol. You could not buy fuel that was in a can anywhere, such as propane, uh, even though Walmart was starting to bring in pallets of like the green uh, bottles of propane, but stuff like the mixed LP fuels, uh, things of that nature, not available. This, all over the place. Cans of denatured alcohol, heat, regular rubbing alcohol, everywhere. So you would not have a problem acquiring fuel in any way, form, or fashion. Okay, so this thing is definitely hot now. Let's go ahead and get our water in here. It's right at about a third of a gallon. Let's get this into our stove. Get our lid on. And I will start the timer and we'll be right back. So we've been running here just about 25 seconds and I can feel the heat already starting to come out of the side of the top here. So the stove is definitely hot. It's doing what it's doing. We're, you know, that's good. So we'll come back when this thing starts getting close to boiling some water and take another look. Okay, we're about eight, almost nine minutes in here. So let's take a look and see what we got. See if I'm out of fuel. Nope. Oh, definitely not. That choker is screaming hot. Okay, let's put that back in. Now it's about 45 degrees outside where I'm at right now. Of course, it's definitely going to impact things. So we're at nine and a half minutes. So we'll just keep checking this guy. <laughs> 